breakthroughs in impression taking and lasers, and a story of how a dental team helped rebuild a small boy's nose after he was attacked by a hyena. Hi, I'm Allie Cook for the Dental News Network. Today is November 13th, 2013, and this is your Wednesday Watch. Here are today's innovative products. Three years in the making, Dentsply Calk's Aquacil Ultra Cordless is a breakthrough in impression taking. There's no need for a cord and no need for paste. This one-step system can be used to place materials directly into the sulcus in just seconds. This experience is less stressful and provides accurate marginal detail. Lasers for Dentistry has introduced the X-Runner Digital Laser Scanner, the world's first all-tissue ablative scanning handpiece in dentistry. The X-Runner is designed for use with the Lightwalker AT all-tissue dental laser system. It has quantum square pulse technology, which provides optimal cutting speed and precision, and also requires less anesthetic. Coming up, the boy whose dentist gave him a new nose. And now, the story of a young boy who was the victim of a horrific attack in Africa, and how a dentist in the U.S. helped him by giving him a brand new nose. Dr. Thomas Balshi is here to tell us about this remarkable procedure. Dr. Balshi, thank you for joining us. How did you get involved with this case? This procedure uh, emanated from Geisinger Healthcare Group in Northern Pennsylvania. A maxillofacial surgeon, uh, Dr. Robert Pelekia, uh, referred the patient to our center. The patient, as you know, came from Ethiopia after being attacked by a wild hyena. The uh, hyena took one bite out of the six-year-old's face, uh, removing his nose, the entire premaxilla, and the posterior section of the maxilla as far back as the first molars. Can you give us an overview of the procedure? So when Cisai first came to us, he had a, a very, very small silicon, uh, kind of out-of-the-box nose that uh, was given to him when he landed in New York. And it was being held on with uh, some adhesives, uh, but it was out of proportion. It was very, very small compared to his face. And so we began uh, looking at what we had to work with. Uh, Dr. Pilecchia and, uh, and one of his residents, uh, Joseph Pierce, put some uh, implants into his facial skeleton, uh, one between his eyes and then one around the first molar region of the what was remaining of the maxilla. The one be, uh, between the eyes uh, was a uh, extra oral cranial facial implant. They used to be made by Noel, Noel BioCare. They're now being uh, made by cochlear implants, the people that make the um, hearing aid implants. So that went between the eyes, a very short implant. Uh, it's about four millimeters in, in depth and it has a flange. The one on the left side was also uh, an extra oral craniofacial implant, and the one on the right side, they couldn't stabilize the craniofacial implant. They ended up using a, a Nobel active uh, implant uh, in that area. So uh, he came to us, and, and uh, with the implants uh, already in for several months, uh, and now we're at the point where we had to uncover the implants and, uh, and then begin to build the uh, framework, taking impressions and making master cast. So we uncovered the framework. All three uh, implants appeared to be uh, firmly integrated. So we proceeded with uh, making the uh, impressions. What was unique about this case? What's unique about this procedure is the fact that he's only eight years old and um, still growing. When we do craniofacial reconstructions, prosthetic reconstructions for, uh, for instance, for cancer patients, they're usually older patients. Uh, they have mature uh, cranial development, and we don't anticipate any real continued growth of their skeleton. But with a young boy, uh, an eight-year-old, uh, obviously we're going to see a lot of growth uh, in the next decade. And so our major concern was if we, even if we were able to get implants to integrate, uh, in the bones of the face, how, what, how are we going to use them and what, what can we do to keep them in place while the rest of the cranium expands and, and continues to grow? So that was our challenge. Tell us, what can other dentists learn from this procedure? Uh, I think we can use uh, many of the different products that are available to us in dentistry um, off-label. Uh, you know, the, the 
Saunders Mateau overdenture bar, for instance, uh, was developed to hold teeth in place uh, on implants, you know, on two implants or four implants. Um, but we learned to adapt things that we have around us uh, with modification and make them work uh, in a very unusual and a way in which they were never intended or dreamed of being used. Uh, so I think that as prosthodontists, uh, we constantly think of ways to correct defects in, in, the, um, in the human being. You know, we, we're trained to replace teeth, we're tra trained to replace jaws, we're trained to replace missing components uh, intraorally and extraorally. Uh, so I think prosthodontists generally think out of the box and, and think about creative and inventive ways to uh, take what we have at our fingertips and, uh, and make it work. What an interesting case. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Balshi. And thank you for checking out the Wednesday Watch. We'll see you next week with more from Dentistry Today and DNN.